stuff. One shot at a time. You're right, Roy. Just knock it on. Let her rip. Right, you're playing golf today. <laughs> no, I'm not, Grandpa. I'm playing tennis. You're playing golf and you're going to like it. Just go home. That's your home. Are you too good for your home? Answer me. Welcome to the Out the Bunker podcast with DT and Jace. Hey guys, welcome to the Out the Bunker podcast. I'm DT. Unfortunately, Jace is absent again. He's over uh, east with work. And um, I have a very special guest in store for all you business folks out there and anyone involved in the NBL one uh, in the past or the SBL. Um, but look, before we begin, I just wanted to say that I truly apologize to anyone who actually thought that Jason was deported. It was only meant to be a bit of fun because in the episode we allude to it. Um, but he is a proud Aussie. He's also a proud South African, and we love both parts equally. So I'm really glad that um, you know that's all rectified, and Jace will be back in no time. Um, without further ado, I want to discuss my new guest. He's an executive of the highest caliber, and excuse my reading here because there is a long list of amazing things that this guy's done. He's an executive of the highest caliber with over 30 years in the banking and finance industry and a true entrepreneurial spirit driven by witnessing the success of his clients and those around him. And I can attest to that uh, wholeheartedly. He's built $3 million businesses from scratch. He's the director and co-founder of Inspired Money. Um, he also heads the Inspired Money Community Assist Program, which has generously supported various char- charities with over 150,000 in donations over four years. Like that's just phenomenal. And now we go into his basketball uh, pedigree. Guilford Grammar School, first V basketball coach, Guilford Grammar, uh, head coach of the WSBL East Perth uh, Basketball Association. He's been an NBL one men's assistant coach for the Coburn Cougars and the Perry Lakes Hawks, and he's currently the Eastern Suns. He's a two-time SBL champion, 2016 with myself and 2018 with myself. He's a 2009 women's SBL runners-up champion 2009 division one women's champion 2014 division one women's champion 2017 malaysian invitational runners-up he's a 2018 men's under 20s national bronze medalist and 2019 silver medalist he works with food rescue joondalup men's shed and he's recently just started work with the stitch in time foundation which is run by the legendary perth wildcat greg hire so look this guy's journey has started from burma all right, he's migrated to Perth. He's been through it all. He's seen the ups and downs. He's been a single father for a while. Um, look, he's the one, the only, the Burmese Python himself, <laughs> Conrad Francis. Welcome, brother. <laughs> Wait, when you read it like that, it's pretty crazy. It's wild. I didn't know you did this much. I was like, you've won two championships? I was, I thought I was the only one that had involvement that's in a, that. Hey, that's, that's a rare school anyway, mate. Two championships, two different clubs. It's wild. I just couldn't believe that... <laughs> When I started reading through, I was I was like, I've got to do some more research because there's more to this guy than what I know from just the basketball world and him yelling at me to toughen up and stop being a princess. <laughs> turn down, um, turn down the jump shots, DT. Yeah, turn, yeah, yeah, yeah. No <laughs> mid range, no mid range, <laughs> no mid range, no mid range. Oh man, when you guys told me that, I could have killed you. Um, but look, I've got you here because I figured when we look at golf, we talk about partnerships, we talk about having to build relationships, and they can be instant. Yep. Right from. If you walk onto a golf course and you don't know who you're playing with, you have to build that relationship as you go around for 18 holes. Otherwise, it can be a very awkward five, six hours. Yep. Or, like myself, Jason and I joined together and we took on WA, eventually took on the world. Um, and look, we've understood each other's strengths, weaknesses. We've held each other to account. Um, we never pull punches with each other. Like just recently, he was straight up front with me. He was like, dude, why did you tell everyone I was deported? And I was like, that's my bad, man. I should have yep. asked you, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> right? And we move on. Yep. So going into that, we'll do a little bit of discussion about, I guess, Live Golf versus PGA. Yep. All right. I don't know if you've read up anything about that. I have. I mean, I've enjoyed the stuff they did at Live, to be honest with you. I mean, it's just refreshing. PGA is getting a bit stale, but... Yep. I do like what they've done. Now, the merger hasn't gone ahead, though, right? So they've done a bit of a – it's kind of like the head companies have merged together. So you know how, like, the UFC and WWE yep. are now owned by TKO? Yep. It's very similar to that, 
right? So the lead company has now joined them together, but they're not coinciding yet. Yeah, okay. If that makes sense. Um, so look, it's it's really awkward now as well because the PGA has claimed multiple awful things over the years, right? Yep. Because the Live Live Golf was involved with Saudi Arabia, they started claiming that oh well, you know this is this is bad money, it's blood money, yep. um, all this type of stuff. Human rights violations, lack of Western, you know, lack of care for Western thoughts and processes, things like that. All of a sudden, Live Golf does pretty well. Yep. All of a sudden, Brooks Kepka and other golfers start to win tournaments that they earned during the PGA. Yep. And now the PGA has magically found some money to pay their players, <laughs> right? Now they're trying to well, keep people. They always people. had the money, but that's the problem. I mean, you wouldn't have had the leakage if they had if they were paying what they had. That's right. So now you're now you're getting, I guess. Cam Smith's over there, yep. one of the you know the best Aussie that we have right now. He left, and everyone hated him for it. And I'm sitting there going, he now has generational wealth. Yeah, it's it's business. It's a business with these boys. I mean, golfing careers, any sporting career is not a long career. So if someone's going to pay you better money to do the job you love to do, mm. you've got to consider it if you're going to jump at it. That's right. And in the previous episode, um, episode three, we spoke with Glenn Paul regarding what it is to be a professional golfer. Yep. And he was saying, when you're starting out, you literally have to pay your own way for yeah, everything. I heard, I heard. I mean, but that's that's what everyone has to do, right? Everyone's and good to do that. But we but don't see that, right? Yeah, we don't see that. We don't see that. All we see is but the, no glitz, one sees the, the glamour. Work, no one sees the hard work. No, everyone sees the glamour because that's what makes the the press. No one sees the hard work. I mean, you read that rap sheet, mate. You would hate to know the hours. You know, yeah, yeah. When people <laughs> say, "Oh shit, I want to do what you did," I said, "You you don't have the time." Yeah, yeah. You don't oh, have look, the time. I used to see the stuff. I mean, I see the stuff now in just the NBL one, how video, um, you have to cut video, you have to cut tape, all that type of stuff. When I was growing up in the SBL, it was literally like coach would hand you a little one-page sheet of the scout report, yep. and that was it. And then we banked on knowing who we played against, yep. right? Like even in my later years when we were cutting up tape and things like that and we had to go on to huddle and watch huddle, I was still like, man, I've played against Joel Wagner yep. for how many years, man? I know how to play him. He knows how to play me. Yep. Right, same thing. So the time that it, in, that it takes now, a head coach and one assistant just can't do it, right? Which is yep. why now you see like five assistant coaches on every well, NBA one bench. It's not just what they've got to do. It's, it's the multiple personalities they have to manage individually. What are you, what are you we, talking about? We, what, what, what personality? We grew up in, a, in an era, <laughs> and you were probably at the tail end of that era. It was yes, sir, no, sir, three bags full. There wasn't any mm. management. It was what he said you did, or you didn't do it, you didn't play. Yeah. Now it's everybody, every single person, right from you know, from number one right down to number fifteen or eighteen in your squad, have to be managed individually. Yeah. Have to be managed personally. You have to know that person how they need to be spoken to. Yeah. Otherwise, you're offending them. Yeah. And look, that's one thing I struggle with. Like later on in my career, yeah. I was like, I just couldn't believe how. How much say everyone had. Yeah. I was used to head coach, assistant coach, the captain. Yep. At times, the SBL director would yep. come down and say some things. Outside of that, nothing the senior players, like nothing else was relevant, you know, which is why we had such a tumultuous time during 2016. But um, getting back to, I guess, the golf, now they've just lost John Rahm. Yep. Now he's copying a lot of backlash because he's now joined. And the problem with it is, is he's made comments a, a reactive comment when yep. Live Golf first came in, right? <laughs> he, and, and it was nasty, some of the stuff he was saying. It was like, I'd prefer to retire yep. than play, all this type of stuff. All of a sudden, $600 million comes about, and that sounds... Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> his comments um, sound a little bit different, right? Yep. So I guess, where do you stand on morality? Yep. This is a tough question for you because I no, know you're a businessman. Okay, so where no. do you stand on the form of morality in terms of you know it's Saudi Arabia money, you know where it comes from, you know I guess what goes on, irrespective. You know versus you know, you know, what, you know so you know what you you know you you know what you know and you know what the media tells you, you know what you might read. But you've got to do your own homework and at some stage you've got to live with the decision to or not to. Mm -hmm. End of story. So if I said to you, live golf for 600 yep. mil or stand by those couple of morals of people that you don't even know? Well, I, I, what would you do? To, to, for what I know, uh, not, not what I read, what yeah, I yeah. know, you know, I've got no problems with the Saudis. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely 100%. no problems. So there's no issues for me. So 600 mil? I, I, I'll walk half of that. <laughs> can, you, can you work <laughs> on that 600 mil for me? <laughs> you give me 100K and I mean, I'm good, man. I'm, yeah, I mean, to me, like I said to you, I mean, a lot in the last few years has taught me 
a lot of, uh, or it's probably compounded the learning already had, is that you just can't believe what you read. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there is so much fake news out there, whatever it is, and I'm not saying this, that the stuff out of Saudi is fake, but mm-hmm. you've got to put it into context. You have to put everything into context. And yeah. I think as human beings, we, f- we fail at putting things contextually, uh, putting things into context often or not. We mm-hmm. just take things on face value. Yeah. So... Yeah, in context, if 300 million, 400 million, 500, 600 million is going to save me and my family, yeah. mate, done deal. And generations later, too. Oof. For years and years and years. All right, so look, can you just tell everyone, I guess, what your business is, what you yeah, do? Sure. Like Inspired Money, let's focus on Inspired Money first. Yeah, so Inspired um, Money is a financial services business. Uh, we look after, I love looking after uh, mums and dads, Australians. You know, I believe everybody should be getting advice. I believe everybody that will benefit from financial advice. Uh, my mum and dad did, which is why I went down that path. You know, my mum and dad were first generation migrants to this country. You know, dad's passed away now, but mum's financially independent. Mm. Now, it's very hard to become financially independent in one generation of, of being an immigrant. Yeah. But we managed to do it, and that's largely because of the financial advice they got at a very young age. So, you know, I love what I do. I know I have an impact with people. Financial education is, is an amazing tool for freeing up people's decision making. As you know, DT, you and I have talked about it a lot. Um, and I think I, I owe a lot to. Um, the advisor that 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 you know put my mum and dad on the right path and then opened the door for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the impact I think the businesses that I've been involved in and the clients I've impacted I think speak for themselves. A hundred, yeah. Like from any of the people that I know, and we won't name them, but any of the people that I know that we've had discussions in terms of like I've seen you with them and things like that. Like man, just amazing. Like the work that you do is just amazing, and I know firsthand when you first, when I first met you, you know, bump heads. We 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 do things. We grow. And eventually you, yourself and Paso turned me into the basketball player that I guess was good enough to, I wasn't the same player I was in terms of when I was younger and I was just hungry and vicious and didn't care who you were, I was going through you, to understanding that there's more to it. It's a team game. And understanding that not everyone thinks the same way I do. Yeah, I mean, but every player that that wants to be, um, or wants to leave a legacy, you know, beyond even forget the word great. If you want to leave a legacy, I think the the growth that has to happen internally um, then matches the out- external achievements. It has to happen. You can't. Mm-hmm. I mean, Jordan's done it. Kobe's done it. All the greats have gone through that. Yeah. You know, in an essence, it's a mature maturation process. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's what it, it happens in life in general. Like I just left a, a under 18 training program and saying that the decisions you make on a basketball court are no different to the decisions you you'll be making in life. Yeah. Just different rules. Yeah, that's right. It's just a diff- like you said, different, different context. Different size court. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. So look, I guess because we have discussed like that live and PGA merger and then the fact that there's still lots of tension and things like that, if you were, let's say, live or let's say if you were PGA and yep. you were looking at it, what are some things that you look for in terms of partnering up with businesses or people? What What are some values? What are some things that you find highly important? I think, I think what people need to understand, particularly at business level anyway, when it comes to relationships, that if you've got a... If your um, success of a relationship is going to be deemed by the contract that you sign, then it's not worth the relationship's not worth it. Mm. So, however they structure this deal, there has to be a hell of a lot of trust on both sides of the people that are involved. Um, yes, people can change, but the integrity of the of the of both in, uh, sides need to be true and promised. It can't be just well documented every right and wrong or document every in and out. You can't do that. You'll never ever be able to do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if, if that's what they're relying on, which I hope they're not, then it's going to fail. But if they, if they truly have golf and the, and the entertainment value of the people and the, and the fans at heart, at heart, yeah, I think something great will come from it because yeah. everything has. I mean, if we remember World Cup, World Cup cricket when Kerry, Kerry Packer took, took that on board yeah. and broke down the cricket, you know, it changed the way cricket was viewed and, and the fans benefited, the players yeah, benefited. Yeah, big time, yeah. You know, so I, th- I think everything needs to go through some sort of uh, change and adaptation and I think Lib brought that to the table. Oh, big time. Big time. I mean, I know I've actually enjoyed watching it more than the PGA yeah. right now just because I do enjoy that. I guess as a fan, when we alluded to it last uh, last talk with Jason about the Waste Management Tour where there's like a hole there that's pretty much treated like the Happy Gilmore hole yep. where everyone's just cheering and yelling and I was just like, when I play golf, I'm not the type of person that gets upset if you're talking. Right. It doesn't phase me yeah. because you've seen me play ball. Like I, I can stand in front of a free throw line, and we did it in the semifinals where yeah. I had to hit the free throws to put the game out of reach against Jero. 
people yelling, cheering, yep. stuff like that. If you're so zoned in on what you're doing, all yeah, that noise, matter. it's just background noise. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean, particularly, I mean, at the levels that you play at and I play at, when there's, you know, sheep stations aren't on the table. Mm. Very, there's very little that can distract you because the value systems in there. Maybe, maybe if you're, if you're putting for a million bucks, it might be different. Yeah, maybe a little bit. <laughs> Man, I, I mean, the putt that I had to sink to get us into over yeah. there, I was more nervous doing that than any of the game-winning things that I did in the SPL, purely just because I didn't have the – like – we talk about we're still not great golfers yep. so the confidence in ourselves is not there yep. and it's amazing just to see how the mind works like automatically in my head I'm just sitting there going oh man if I miss this we're in trouble here yep. like we're not going and that doubt crept in my head yep. and Matt like this like you know Muhammad Ali out yep. there I was just shaking right um, so look I guess as a basketball coach and a business owner yep. between the two sports I mean, what are some similarities that you see between sports world, business world, Yep. right? And I guess how can you take what you do from, let's say, the business world, yep. put that into your coaching or vice versa? Yeah, well, I mean, I think at a very young age, I've been coaching for a while now. Um, but how long exactly? Uh, just, yeah. <laughs> you don't need to give me your age. Probably goes back to mid-2000s when I first started. I, I mean, S- SBL was 2009, but yeah, I was coaching yeah. before then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, I joined the dots on business and basketball pretty early. I mean, because I got, I got the organisational structure. You know, all teams need to be built a certain way for success. Yeah. When you read about the dynasty teams in the NBA and the like, um, any sport, any team sport, every team needs to be built a certain way around mm-hmm. strengths and weaknesses of players and its coaches. So you know, I it felt it came to me that you know organisational structures, both business and teams, are all the same thing. Um, they just need to be driven by what the plan is and they need to be held accountable to what their jobs and their roles are. Yeah, yeah. So in an organisation, you'll have a board, you'll have management, you'll have the workers, all right? And everyone has got individual and collective goals and targets or what they call KPIs. And in basketball specifically, same thing exists. You've got the board, the coaches, you've got the middle manager, the leadership group, then you've got the players, which are the worker bees. And everyone has, individually and collectively, things that they should be held responsible for. Mm-hmm. And the clearer that those messages are... And the more buying you get, the easier it becomes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get. I suppose. Yeah. I mean, that the way you've just put it actually makes sense because everyone seems I to hope so, mate. No, no, no. It does. No, no, no. But it's just kind of clicked for me because I was about to say to you, yeah, but the players make more money, and then I was like, no, they don't. I was like, they're head oh, honchos. They, they, they can do. No, they can do. I mean, in the NBA, they do. I mean. The, but do you pro- still think they make more than the board, of, like the guys on the board? And no, stuff no, like no. I, I mean, if you're comparing them to that, the players don't. Yeah, that's um, what I mean. Because you said I mean, worker but, bees. But, mate, but worker bees, but guys in my office have the ability to earn more than me. <laughs> yeah. 100% they do. Yeah. I mean, I encourage them to. I mean, because yeah. I'll only ever benefit my... So if a, if a, if a person that works for me does well, um, yeah, fine, it might come out of my pocket and, and bonuses mm-hmm. that I get how I pay myself, but the reality is that the valuation of my business goes up. Yeah. You know, that's right. where the real money is. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it, we've got to look at what you're focused on. You yeah. know, you're focused on short-term, long-term. I'm always a long-term thinker. Yeah, you are. So, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, I I want individuals to have success. Yeah. Because I'll only benefit from benefit from it in some way, shape, or form. You know, you guys on a basketball court have success. Parso and I benefited from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we didn't go put the buckets in. <laughs> no, you didn't. He, he would have thought he could. I've seen you shoot. No, you didn't. <laughs> Parso definitely thought he could. But... I guess for me that makes a lot of sense because I can still remember with uh, Marcus, right? We were we were questioning, <laughs> right? And I, I don't care. I'm never going to see him again, right? But we there was a point there where we were questioning: Is he right for what we need to do? Yeah. And I can remember you being the one person, and we had this conversation between senior uh, players, yep. coaching staff, and you literally said, "We need him to win." Yeah, and we did, regardless of all the outside stuff yep. that went on, right? The <laughs> yep. The chaos that went on. It was chaos, right? People really don't know unless you were there, right? It was chaos. That, that, those stories still get told, mate. That uh, people still don't understand. I, I still level. tell them. <laughs> I can still remember that practice, mate. And, Paulie, you can put this out wherever you want. That Because people cannot fathom how we all got along. You had some big personalities. You had me. You had Rhett, right? Huge personalities yep. as Aussies. Then you had Bob, who was a very quiet but a big personality. A big personality, right? yep. Quiet. Sheldon, huge yep. personality. 
Then you had Marcus, you had Najee. Like, we had just huge personalities. And there was that one practice I can still remember where Najee threw Stevie to the ground. Yep. Guy Aerosmith shirt off <laughs> yep. and was ready to go toe to toe. And that same practice, yep. Grant left, remember? Yep. He was like, I've had enough of this. Yep. So we actually lost players. We lost Calvin that year as well because yep. he couldn't, like. He broke down. Yeah, he broke down. Like, because, <laughs> dude, unless you were prepared to go through that and deal with the crap that we did. You were not going to last on that team. No, but that's but that's that's also you know everybody thinks that you know that's not, well these days if that happens on a basketball court it's frowned upon. Mm. You know it happened last year with us at the Eastern Suns. Yeah, and Joe Cook Green had to go with the one of the young young fellas towards the end of the season. Yeah, yeah. And everyone was going bananas. Even BC <laughs> was going bananas. Yeah. And I said Treher wasn't around. I said, mate, everyone just calm down. I said this is good. Yeah. This is good. I said let's just. Put it to the side, move on. Yeah, like, and that's all we need to do. You know, don't feed it. Men are being men, boys are being boys, and we'll just figure out. We figure out the way forward through the mess. One hundred percent. And after that practice, man, we were more connected. Yeah, 100%. O- on court. Hundred percent. More connected off court, not so much. Naji and Marcus would kind of se- kind of separate themselves a little bit from all of us. Yep. But at the same time, like on court, man, we were together. Like no one was going to break us. That Junior Lap Wolves team, they, they didn't know what hit them in their grand final. No. Right, no idea. No, Jerry right. didn't know what got him in the semis. No. Aaron still talks about that. Yeah, he still yeah. reckons that we robbed him. Well, we, took we didn't him rob him. We took it. <laughs> we didn't take we, we We didn't rob anything, man. We were there. Well, VC and me, we, we remind Aaron about the championships he's lost, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is he still coaching this year? Yeah, he's up there, yeah, mate. That's, that's any reason I'm up there. I mean, I, he's a good dude, I, man. I don't, I don't think I've got it in me to be a head coach anymore, mate. So, I mean, I'm happy to run side shot to someone like this. Yeah. Nah, he's, he's a good dude. Um, so, look, I guess if you were an entrepreneur. Yep. All right. Like, I am an entrepreneur. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm saying if you were. Yep. All right. So let's say, like myself and Jason, we're trying to do something. Yep. Not anything Admirable, huge, but we're trying, trying to do it. some fun yep. things with golf, trying to get golf, I guess, out there for everyone. Yep. You know what I mean? There's still large, you know, stigmas and stuff behind golf. We just want everyone to enjoy what we do. Like, we, we love getting out there. We get angry at times, but we absolutely love what we do. So, as an entrepreneur, I mean, what's something a piece of advice that you've either gotten or given that has just stuck with you. And I know there's one that I've read up about. Oh, jeez. And it was, you might run around me? <laughs> no, no, no. It's it's all about um, feed a... Uh, oh, hand a teach man a man fish. how to fish. Yeah. yeah, but outside of that, what's one piece of advice that someone's given you that's just kind of gone, it's there, and whenever I lose track, I go back to that. Don't do it for money. Don't do it for money. It, it can't be about the money. Yeah. That's, that's, the, that's the biggest... Misnomer, mm. or the biggest lie anyone tells themselves. I mean, money's a byproduct, right? I mean, I'm very, very clear with what's an input and what's an output. You know, so money's an output. The input is the work, the hours, the, and you've got to love those things because you've got to put a lot of that in. Yeah. I and mean, you guys know when you, when you start ups, um, you know, there's a lot of work that needs to be done with very little, with very little. Mm. You know what? Some people don't realise with me is that you know starting up those businesses. Um, particular last one you know it, they were all started with just next to nothing mm-hmm. and you know the 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 months that you eat two minute noodles yeah all right me in college know, yeah <laughs> well like, hey listen ramen noodles baby every, that was time, it. every time there's a startup business that's exactly what it is it's a case <laughs> of okay you little. prepared to eat two minute noodles every damn day mm. you know i had to go borrow a car from someone because yeah. i didn't have a car like the shit that you got to do to put to go all in on stuff. That's mm. the other thing. You've got to go all in, and so you can't worry about money. You've got to be able to look, you know, take care of yourself in the minimums. Yes. Um, and you can't do it for money. I mean, they're all the wrong targets. Do it to have the impact you're trying to have. You know. Yeah. So for me, it's about trying to make everyday Australians more more affluent, more yeah, financially yeah, yeah. free. Um, and you know, that's that's my goal. My that's got to be tough right now, though, with everything going on in the economic yeah, world. Hey, you know it's a challenge, hundred percent. It's a challenge. I mean, it's tougher now than ten, fifteen years ago. No, no. I mean, the funny thing with my business or financial services is that what you'll see, it's generally, it's in times like this that people actually start to take stock of what they got mm, or what they don't. Okay, yeah. So then they start bringing you in. When the when the truth is, they should they should have like the old saying, you know, when's the best time to plant a tree, uh, plant a seed? It was twenty years ago. Then when's the next best time now? So, yeah, yeah okay. I, I can sit down with everybody and say, you should have seen me 20 years ago. I like that, yeah. Um, but, hey, I can still make an impact now. Yeah. And, you know, I'm working with people in that space right now. Yeah, well, shit, I, would have, I wished I had you 10 years ago, 20 years ago. I would have, I, you would be retired by now. Yeah, hindsight's amazing. Yeah. Right? I said, but, yeah, we, we can get you there. Hmm. So, look, I guess you're a leader in what you do. Even as, even as an assistant coach, yep. you lead specific parts of 
uh, coaching, playing, all that type of stuff. Yep. The team that I was always involved with was you and Paso. Yep. Right? Paso was the guy out there on the court. But then when we'd come off, you were leading what gets told to us and how you say it and you read very well a person's emotions and you know how to do different things with different people. And it's something I've always... I've just always thank you guys. I may not say it, yep. but you guys literally helped me out big time to just understand that, look, there was a different approach of how I approach people. When I was in Jero, I was an angry individual, right, who just wanted to prove everyone wrong that, like, I was made yep. for certain levels. Um, and it had an impact on certain players that just didn't have that same passion that I did, right? But then when we were going to that 2016 championship, I got messages from some of those boys saying, dude, I wish I had have taken in or understood why you were the way you were. You know what I mean? Because they had never experienced that. And then when they saw me being successful, they took that and gone, yeah, I guess that there is a bit of uh, like reason yep. to his madness. So as a leader, I guess, what do you hope people say about you as a boss? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, this is, okay, so the fallacy is that leadership is about... No, it's a numbers game, and it's not. Leadership is a lonely game, mm. all right? Um, you've got to be able to deal with your own thoughts in isolation yeah. and l for long stretches. Now, if you think that you're trying to make everybody happy, you'll never make anybody happy. Um, so, yeah, so to me, mate, I'll be blatantly honest, most of the people that have come through my, my office, and I've had a few that I've coached in basketball circles and I've mentored for, for a long time, you know, I know, I know my value, so I don't need to be validated by, by them, mm -hmm. but... Um, the impact I've had, I would like to think at some stage they, they uh, would say some nice things, but I don't need it. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, I know I know what I've done is out of value. I mean, there's there's no there's no doubt about that. Whether people want to see that or not, it's up to them. Mm. Um, you know, I've had plenty of conversations where clients of people didn't become clients. I know I've added value. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look, and I guess from me, man, I I can only thank you for the value you've added to my life. Like. I know you don't need to hear that, yeah. but you've definitely added value in terms of the way I approach people. Yeah, um, I'm no longer that person who just rushes to. Yeah, but that's that's part of you. you know, know. That's part of you maturing too, D. I mean, you know, I don't know whether it's got a lot to do with with me other than the fact that it was in the situation, the circumstance, mate. So it was always going to happen at some stage. This is what triggers. Uh, was it? <laughs> well, hey, hey, hey it, it's always a trigger point. Now, so yeah. you, for you, it's probably winning a championship that, that caused you to, to grow and evolve or be, be in, the, in, the, in the midst of winning a championship. I just don't think I ever dealt with people like you, though. That's the thing. Mate. I didn't. Like, realistically, my old coach uh, up in Jero, I had, like, Ray Evans, who loved, loved cheese to death, but he'd rock up to practice and he'd literally write his practice notes then. Then I had the flip side. I had Heza, who was literally writing notes weeks before yep. for that practice, right? But it was still like, I guess, how do you deal with individuals? That wasn't there. That kind of give and take wasn't there. Like Heza was a long way away from the team in terms of he wanted to make sure that he was the coach yep. and that was it. Ray was too much of yep. one of the boys. Like, man, the nights we used to <laughs> on road trips home, like he was worse than us. Right, and yeah, don't get I've me wrong. It was, yeah, it was fun, like yep. great time, right? Like him, Brownie, good to catch up with all the old boys and stuff. We had a time, but I don't think that was ever going to get us across the line because there was no thing. And then I felt like the uh, the opposite was different. And then when I found like yourself and Paso, I had been with Paso for a yep. lot for before, but I heard that he had dubbed down, yeah, right, which needed to much like me, right? I, I needed to dub myself down. Yep. And then you were always that guy. I always noticed, even early on, he still had that like fire in him. And there was always you, just like, come, wait, wait, pass it. It's all good, man. We got this. Like, we just like chill, chill, chill. Like you guys bounced off each other so well, and that filtered through. Like everyone felt that. I, th I think. Team. I think if your leadership is good, then the only choice you got to make is do you want to follow or not. Mm. You know that. So, but if you're not, if you're not, if you're not good with your leadership, then you got nothing to follow. Yeah, yeah. So you know, at the end of the day, like anything. It's, okay, do I believe in what they're telling me? Do I believe we can win a championship? You know, do, do I believe that the coach's offense is going to work? Yeah, blah, blah. You, you know, so, and sometimes you've just got to have faith and trust. Yeah. Sometimes you're not going to know. And that's what I say to some people all the time. It's like, in the absence of knowing, just trust. Yeah. Pick the right, pick the right leader to follow and just trust. That makes your life a ton easier. Yeah. A ton easier. Because they're doing the heavy lifting. 
Uh, yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, they're going to tell you where to put your feet, but they're doing the heavy lifting. They're cutting down the friggin' the the the, the path ahead of you with the machetes. You, yeah, you're yeah. not having to do that. You just got to do your bit. Yeah, you're like the frontline soldiers, yeah. like just going. Yeah. So look, tell me a bit about. I guess I've, I saw recently that you partnered up with a stitch in time. Right, well, which we've, is we've done some stuff. We've done some stuff with with Greg now for a few years. I mean, Greg's worked with me as an assistant coach of one of my state teams that I was lucky enough to have him with. And did not know that. Yeah, so I, I picked up a team just post COVID that they asked me to pick up a bottom age twenties, which I've never done before. Um, and I said, okay, what what better bloke to get than Greg High? So mm. Greg was was brought in. Talk about someone who got the most out of himself. Yeah, hundred percent. Huh? Like. Not the most skillful guy in terms no, of like hard work, but, but man, that dude worked hard. Yeah, worked hard. I used to hate him. Oh, God, like I used I mean, to hate yeah, playing what, against him. Did he get thirty odd and twenty in no, that grand final? I mean, disgusting. that's obscene. Yeah. Obscene. Yeah, like he just used to man, and he, I loved it because he was new school but old school. Yeah, you came through the lane, you knew that Greg was going to hit yep. you. And I always had respect for him. Man, coaching against yeah. him, I mean, the, I, I would have said a ton of junk to him. Coaching yeah, you did. A ton of junk. Yeah, you um, did. <laughs> <laughs> and so when I got a chance to work with him, it was great fun. Um, and, you know, then I learned about his charity. And, you know, mate, I, I'm a person that I'm never going to be – I'll never die wondering, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I've got a means to, to help and assist. You know, I'm not a person that knows a lick about the mental health space that Greg works in and specialises in. Uh, but I do know that I see clients that, that we have that are dealing with some major issues. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so I, him and I came up with a program that he runs that we've funded to go into uh, sporting organisations that aren't highly funded sports and put on mental health workshops. Give me an idea. What are some hot, not highly funded sports? Oh, jeez, man. I mean, off the top of my head, without trying to offend anybody, lacrosse, I think we, we, yeah. we yeah. don't say lacrosse. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just not a big sport in WA no, compared and, to what it is in the And so States. there's other sports that have got funding that can afford stuff like this, mm-hmm. and, there's other, and there's a lot of sports that don't have the funding. Yeah. I mean, and they don't have the lacrosse as well. Mate, but there are other sports. Off the top of my head, I can't name them, mate, but um, there's been a ton. Like, we've been doing this program for a few years now, and, you know, it's been really rewarding to be around and watching what Greg does. Yeah. Um, but when I got involved with Greg, I said, mate, you know, if I'm going to give you money, I said, I want to be able to know how it's being used. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I, w- I want some, there's going to be some key metrics on it to be seeing hit. Yeah. Um, and he goes, man, I love the fact that you want to hold me accountable. I said, well, I've got to. I said, because I work too hard. Yeah, of course. So, you know, everything I do has to be me- measured, mate. Has to be measured. Otherwise, I'm wasting time. Yeah, yeah. But uh, 100%. So Greg, Greg's a great charity. I mean, obviously, we've sponsored some other, we've given some money around other places. But Greg's our, probably our biggest one at the moment that we've, we've gone all in on yeah. uh, for about four years now. Did you go to the golf day that he that they just had? No, I mean I wanted to, but my golf game's probably gone to gone to bloody. I haven't played enough in the last year or two, so you know I probably need to be having a few rounds before I even put myself in that vicinity and allow people to throw some shit at me. So, because <laughs> <laughs> our last host, uh, our last guest, Glenn, yep, he was the um, pro that they yeah, got yeah. out for the day. So I was like, that's really cool to then, and we've had this in the works even before we yep. spoke to Glenn. Just timing didn't work out. As you said, you're a busy bloody man, like throughout the week. With oh man, I, you know, when you're trying to get me in here, I'm thinking, <laughs> man, like Wednesdays. Wednesdays are usually I'm, I'm at mum's. Be I'm not, I'm have dinner with mum's. I've been doing that for the last mm-hmm. twenty years. Uh, but then my, my nephew's up the hill, so I've started coaching, them, helping out at the 18s, and that's yep. on a Wednesday night. So, so your nephew's playing in the team that year. He's playing in the 18s at Eastern Suns. He's training with the NBL one squad. Um, Aaron's happy with what he's seeing out there. You know, you might see that kid play there this year. I mean, Sweet. Uh, he's, he's playing for the WA State 18s this year. Um, That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, it, 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 right. It's so cool to see, like, and I find WA to be really like that. It's one of those sports, like, it, you see families trickling in. Yeah. So, like, right now I'm coaching um, on Saturday mornings, I'm coaching Sonny Walter's daughter. Yeah, okay. And, like, <laughs> she's a little gun. Yeah, whereabouts? Right? Down at Coburn. At, at the at, at Coburn basketball well, Hagen. not the Ark. I don't go okay. to the Ark, man. <laughs> you seen the referees at the Ark? I was at Wally Hagen. Not this happening, Sunday, brother. I was oh, there. Yeah. 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 So on Saturdays, I coach the under eight girls team. Uh, for the Timber Tigers and yeah like Sonny hit up Josh Mitchell yep. and was like hey you know um, my daughter wants to play blah 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 you're coaching Jumped girls you're it. coaching young girls good luck man oh man they, you know what they they play more as a team it's it's amazing fundamentally girls much. are actually better basketballers 100%, fundamentally 100% yeah 100% yeah, fundamentally I've been, I, you know that when people ask because I've had some time coaching women and I've, and I've coached men obviously and the difference is, women, uh, you're coaching the game. Men, you're coaching the ego. <laughs> Whatever do you mean, Connor? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know exactly what I mean. <laughs> yeah, it's um, no, it, it's honestly so good. And it, it's a funny story about this, right? And 
hopefully he's okay with me telling her, but I was tagging Sonny in some of the stuff, yep. right? Because I'd love to get him on the show and stuff. <laughs> he blocked me. <laughs> <laughs> what? Because he thought that I was a um, like a fake account. Oh, God. So, because Top Deck Golf, he's just like, who the hell are these guys? <laughs> and he's a professional athlete. He yep. doesn't need drama in his life. He doesn't need psychos and stuff yep. like that. So he blocked me. And anyway, he rocks up to <laughs> the game. And he recognises me and recognises I got top of the golf. And he was like, man, I blocked you, bro. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, come on, man. I, he was like, oh, man, like Josh had to tell me that you were a real person. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, and like now every Saturday I have a good chin wag with him and it's great, you know. Like, um, But I'd love to get him on to talk more about. Oh, I mean, he'd be good to get on. Oh, he's a fantastic bloke. And, you know, me being an Eagle supporter as well, I now kind of will always support the Dockers as well. Just because when you see athletes on the field, they're not the same as they are off the field. And people... No, they really are. So many people don't understand that. Jordan's probably the only guy that I could say off the court, he's still an arsehole. Pardon the expression, right? He's probably off the court just as... Have you heard you, what he's done with his golf course? No, I haven't heard what he's done with, what he's done with his golf course. So, I worry about what the cigars he smokes. You worry about the golf courses he has. Yeah, right. No, no, no. <laughs> so he's created... This is the type of psychotic human being this guy is, right? He created a golf course that suits his game. Damn, so what's wrong with that? No, 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 no. If you can, if cool. you can. You know his gambling <laughs> issues, right? So he makes sure when he invites professionals yep. onto the course, he set up the fairways to be wider where he hits, and then the longer distances, the fairways just magically narrow. <laughs> and I was just like... If you can, you can. Bro, that is the ultimate... Um, what do they call it? Like, grudge, but what? That's the ultimate... That's the ultimate flex, all right? hundred percent it like, is. Like, dude, you're playing on my course. <laughs> my ball's going to be on the fairway. You're going to be in the trouble. <laughs> He's putting, like, water there. It's, like, it's but crazy. But they want to play with MJ, mate. So oh. they're going to they're gonna deal with it. I'd love to. Can you get me on that golf course? Oh, with man. <laughs> just... I just want to smoke because, he, you know, he's got his own cigar roller. Does he? Yeah, he has his own cigar roller. Wait, wait, rolls. like just the dude that sits, that's at, sits his no rolls. way. 100% he does. He's got his own cigar roller for his own sticks. Now, I believe you can buy them, <laughs> but I can't find them. Robbie Huntington reckons he had his hands on some, but never, never eventuated. So... Oh man, that's oh, dude. That, that's just if you if you want a good watch, watch his interview on Cigar Aficionado on YouTube. Oh, well, I have to have a watch. That is, mate. They're smoking some pre uh, pre Castro Cubans on there, and they're just chatting, mate. That's I've never wild. I've never seen him that relaxed. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's worth listening to if you're Jordan. Far fan. out, man. That's wild. Um, so look, I guess my last little line of questioning is. Give me a funny story, and I'm sure you've got loads, <laughs> but it's got to be from the business world. So give me something oh, that man. you can tell that is not, you know, like going to put anyone in a bad spot, but what's something that you have that you just sit there and go, whenever I look back on that moment, I just kind of chuckle oh. that this actually happened, or you don't need to give the name of the person, but just, you know, a client or someone you had seen or, or something that you can think of off the top of your head. There's plenty that happen that are funny, D. I just... I, re- I really... When I, when I say funny, I'm a nerd funny, right? Yeah, go. So, say it, yeah. Plenty of nerds, man. Hey? This is a golf <laughs> podcast, bro. They're, they're, not, they're not athletes. Like, they're, they're not dudes coming out, you know, um, you know, kicking seven goals in the AFL. Like, they're golfers. Oh. <laughs> so, so give me I, a nerdy one. I don't oh, care. Oh, man. I still play Xbox, man. I'm 38. But I, yeah, the problem is I can't say it without giving away who who that involves because oh, that that's no. where the humour comes from. Um, <laughs> okay, so no, I can't do it, man. Okay, no, that's fine. That's fine. All right, look, we'll take a quick break. Yep. Um, and then we'll come back in a couple of minutes, and yeah, we'll finish off with the front nine and back nine. Yeah, cool. And then basically we'll get into I guess your websites and the basketball stuff that you're doing. Cool. To finish off. Cheers. All right. Be back. Soon. Hey guys, welcome back. A uh, little bit of a break here, a little bit of a drink break for both of us. Um, Conrad, we're now going to get Are into... Are we sponsored by these dudes? No, but we, do you want to? Do you Man, like it? If you're sponsored by these guys, I'll just come and sit in the crowd every day. This is every... the only reason I got it is because of you, mate. It's the only reason I came here, DT. <laughs> <laughs> come on, man. You're meant to be helping me out and plugging me. Nah, jokes. Um, look, Jason and I do a... It's what we call the front nine, the back nine. Yep. All right, first set of questions are going to be a little bit more like you can divulge a bit more second ones are just going to be like a this or that true or false sure. and if we want to discuss it we can cool all right so some trivia seeing as though you're a oh, connoisseur of scotch 
What is the I wouldn't best? say I am. Oh, man, I've I just seen like it. You, yeah, you're part of a whiskey club, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I don't read the shit they give me. I just drink it. <laughs> so what is the best-selling scotch slash whiskey in the world? Oh, I'd like to say McAllen's. You'd like to be wrong. Yeah. What yeah. is it? Johnny Walker. Johnny Walker, yeah. 22.7 million Johnny Walker. What, nine red? litre cases. Just Johnny Walker okay. as a whole. But see, that covers everything. I mean, I, I like the double black. Yeah. Love the double black. It's got that oaky kind of Yeah, I, would, I should it. have said Walker, I mean. But yeah, I, I just know that McKellen does sell a lot yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, who are the three, seeing your businessman, who are the three richest people in the world right now? Right now. I usually know that stuff, but off the top of my head, I would have to say Elon would be there. Ooh, Elon would be there. Yeah. Do you know what number he'd be? Two. Yep. Then the dude that owns LVMH will be there. That's Jim. the the um, Bernard Bernard Art or Art. Ooh, oh, give me some he's Conrad one, Bernard Anolt. Anolt, yeah. Yeah, he's number one. He's at two hundred yeah, twenty eight point five. That's that's mega. Like if you if if your listeners are into into luxury brands, Hermes, LVMH, and those things, mate, they they would have made more money owning the stock than owning any of their materials. It's yeah, wild, man. Twenty two hundred twenty eight point yep. five billion. Yep. So That's number three, that would be interesting though. So, so if Elon's two, he's number one. I'd have to go with Bill Gates. No, no, he's dropped. He had to give half of it away to his I'm wife. Sure, <laughs> he's lost half of it. <laughs> he's gone well down. My, my guy, I don't think Buffett's. I don't think Buffett's in the top nah. four at the moment. Someone who owns Amazon. Oh, yeah, man, Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos, yeah. yeah. He's actually dropped below the 200, mate. He's down at 196. I mean, yeah, the poor share, guy. share price had a bit of a hit, though, too. <laughs> so. um, okay, you got to kiss one, Yep. marry one, <laughs> God. dump one. <laughs> Margot Robbie, Jennifer Hawkins, Naomi Campbell. So you got to kiss one, marry one, dump one. Jennifer Hawkins, kiss. Margot Robbie, dump. <laughs> and Naomi Campbell, yeah. you marry and your wife yeah. and Naomi Campbell. Yeah, she's stunning. She is stunning. She is stunning. Oh, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Paulie loves it, man. He loves it. <laughs> yeah, loves it. Um, all right, here's one for you. Seeing as though we've dealt with so yeah. many Americans in our life, and we know the issues over there with obesity <laughs> and things like that, how many times does the average American open their fridge? Oh, interesting. A, in a day. In a day? In a day, bro. You will be... Horrified. <laughs> I, want you to, I want you to think about, like, you wake up in the morning, you might open the fridge, what, twice? Yeah, I reckon twice. Maybe twice, Maybe twice three times okay. a day. Yep. What do you think the average, average, this is 438 million people in that country, so 200 and something million of them are doing this on average. Is it north of 100? No, 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 it's not no, that bad. Not that, that bad? But I want you to think about, you, you said three. Three. 25? <laughs> 33. What are they eating, man? I don't have enough food in there to go 33 yeah, all times. It's protest, mate. It's got to stay <laughs> in the fridge. All right. In what sport, surely you've seen this, in what sport does Fanny Schmeller participate? Is it alpine skiing, dodgeball, or ping pong? Fanny Schmeller. Yep. I'm going to go with dodgeball. Alpine it's skiing. Game. How did you not get that? Well, you know what? <laughs> Have you not seen that from... Who the um, hell watches Alpine Sky? No, it's, it's not from that. <laughs> that is literally from one of the best... Uh, what's the show where they have like the boards that they go down and they have to press the Family button? Family Feud? No, no, no. There's one person up the top oh, and they're yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Chaser, the chaser. The chaser, yeah, yeah. Right? It's the British version. Okay. And the dude loses it for like five minutes, man, straight, just trying to get this person's yeah. name out. <laughs> um, all right. What is your favourite holiday destination? Let's learn a little bit about you. What's your favourite holiday destination? And I don't do a lot of holidays, to be honest with you. Everything, everything ends up being a business trip. But, you know, I'll be, I'll, I'll be honest with you. The last time I actually think I had a real holiday um, was probably when I went back home, back to Burma or Myanmar. Yeah. I saw parts of that place. Like, oh, I grew up. Well, I didn't grow up there. I came here when I was one. So mm. the stories you hear um, and the places I hung out with over there, well, yeah, that was probably one of my, my fun places. I'd love to go back there if the place settles down, yeah. Yeah, Okay. The country's beautiful, the people are beautiful, food's amazing, and the beaches are to die for. Really? Yeah. yeah you wouldn't pick that, would you? Like, Man, the just beaches hearing, are yeah. to die for. Yeah, okay. Um, something I'll have to look at. What's your funniest memory of our 2016 championship? Damn, one memory. Yeah. I don't even know if I could say that, so I'll bypass the first one. Well, why not? Why can't you? No, hey? you can say it as long as it's you know within reason. 
course no, you can. No, no. Well, every – was it Thursday night? Every Thursday night after training, I used to feed Nargi and, and Marcus. Mm-hmm. And those – well, Marcus could eat a damn chicken in like half a heartbeat. <laughs> So, you know, and I, I had the pleasure of feeding him and Ma, and Naji and Trav Hado hung out with me for a bit. But, yeah, I've never seen somebody inhale a, chi- a whole chicken. <laughs> Just a whole chicken? Yeah, gone. I'll never forget he used to rock up with that gone, shirt that mate. said NBA Fit. And I'm like, yeah. I don't think you are, dude. <laughs> like, so that, uh, dude that dude was playing G League before he came out, right? Yeah. The reason why, wasn't, why he wasn't playing the it wasn't playing He was eating whole chickens. <laughs> no, man. He punched a teammate and broke his wrist. Of course he did. Well, he punched a cab driver <laughs> after our championship. You remember that? That was Naji. That was that wasn't that wasn't Mark. Man, that was Nardi. Paulie, and man. I spoke to Nardi the other day. I got, dude, we got stories, bro. I spoke to Nardi the other day. He's got two boys that can go too, mate. Yeah. Like, on a basketball court. So here's one for you. Can you remember Michael LeBlanc? Played with me and Jero. I don't I know, know if you were I, around. I, I, I know the name, mate. I mean, I wasn't coaching men. Man, he was playing. a baller, dude. He was yeah. one of my favorite imports. Everyone used to call him lazy because he was just like so relaxed yeah. on the court. But he wasn't lazy. The dude played like. Um, yeah, yeah, he was he was he was a solid dog. Yeah, but he his son's now coming out to play for Lakeside apparently. Oh, is he? It's been signed for Lakeside. I just caught up with the Lakeside guy today. He didn't say anything, so that's interesting. yeah. Be well, that, that's what he's told me. I don't know whether it's fallen through or not, or whether he's found somewhere else. But yeah, apparently. So I was like, man, that's a small word. He was like, yeah, when I be come down, to see what he's like up. compared to his old man. Mm. Um, if you okay, if you had to choose, never seeing again, yep, or having no hands again, what are you taking? Oof. Oh man. No hands, like you just you're nubbing it. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> like <laughs> that's it. Yeah. No hands or no sight. So you can still hear, breathe, smell, touch, feel, everything. Or you can see perfectly fine, but you're just fumbling that bottle, man. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I would probably oh man, that's that's hard. <laughs> that is so hard. <laughs> Um, I'm kind I would, of picturing you trying to pick up that bottle. Now. Well, you can get away with the straw, right? You can get away with the How straw. How do you get that off? <laughs> How do you get the cork no, mate, out? There's got to be shit there that's See, invented for that no, stuff. No, you can't even do that. Yeah, I anyway. don't know. Yeah, it'd have to be hands. I can't, hands. I can't do without hands. No, fair enough. All right, if you could go back in time and change one thing, what would it be? Well, you know, uh, this I'd, can be worldwide. Like one thing, like one time in history that you would go back and change, what would it be? I'm I'm a not I'm not a fan of changing things for the sake of changing because everything's the way it is, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I'll, I'll be very. I'll keep it close to home. I mean, I'd love to have my dad around still. Um, yep. You know, so some extra time with my, my old man. To be honest with you, I um, love that. that. That's dope. That's that to me. Um, we talk about mat- being mature, or becoming mature. I think mm-hmm. losing my old man forced me into some growing up um, that everything else in the world never challenged me to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think. Um, you know, you wouldn't, and ha- you know, three men in this room here. You know, one of the biggest challenges for every young boy is to emulate his father or, or to or to uh, feel like they've made their dad proud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, even when my dad passed away, I feel I felt like I hadn't done that. Yeah, um, yeah. And maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. I mean, I think you've made him proud, man. If if he's looking down, if heaven's real, yeah, yeah, I'd like to think so. I mean, I but it's one of those that. things. It's like I didn't know how to speak to my old man when he was around mm. uh, because, again, you just feel like a boy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was one of those things. I think if you got that chance again, maybe maybe the relationship would be. I wouldn't say we had a bad one, but it could be a different one or a more mature yeah. one. Fair yeah. enough. All right, let's go to the back nine. Clinton or Bush? Oh fuck! Couldn't you go bloody red or blue on this <laughs> no, one? Clinton or Bush? <laughs> Damn, Bush, Bush, because he's because of the Bushisms. It's funny. I mean, that's not because he's smart. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. I can okay. take the humour. Fly. Or boat, so plane yeah, or boat. I, I I actually hate everything to do with flying, other than getting to the destination. So yeah, it has yeah. to be boat. Okay. Football or soccer? Yeah, soccer. You call it soccer? Yep, yeah, soccer. I grew up playing soccer. I, I'm, I'm not the guy that. But, no, but I'm saying, do you call it football? I've never no. So we've, we've always known playing, it soccer. playing soccer. I played yep. soccer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. WWE wrestling or reality TV. I know you wrestling. probably don't like either. <laughs> no wrestling. No man, I went and listened. I went and listened to the Undertaker speak last Friday. Night. Oh, oh, my mate was there that I went to the actual event. Yeah, with. Oh, so yeah, I mean, I, I haven't watched a lot of WWE these days, but yeah, yeah back in my younger days, apparently he told some wild stories about Midian. Mate, he told a lot guys. of stories, but it was yeah. a, it was a little bit of wrestling and a lot of drinking. Yeah, and, and um, I'm, and I'm thinking like Travis saying, well, I wish we had a bit more insight as to him. I yeah. said, mate, they are performers. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so you're always in character. Kayfabe, they never break kayfabe. Yeah. Like he, he would him doing this tour would have broken kayfabe. Yeah, right. Regardless, so um, lollies or candy. 
What do you call it? Lollies. Lollies? Hate them anyway. Yep. Steak or fish? Steak. Golf or tennis? And be careful with Golf. You. Good man. I can't play tennis. I love I love the game and yeah. I love the idea and I do play when I when I when I've got a chance, but I'm bad at it. Yeah. I'm 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 less version of bad playing golf. <laughs> You haven't seen us play. <laughs> no, um, I've, watched you, I've watched your stuff. Unless you just show me the good stuff. But uh, yeah. No, look, we show you good stuff. But I, I like to think we show the bad as well. Um, 2016 championship or 2018 championship? They both had their challenges and they both you know, landed on the pallet differently. I mean, winning your first one's always the best one. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's... That was pretty yeah. good. <laughs> winning your first one, you know, no one's, no one's done it the way Parson and I did it um, or the group did it. Um, no, yeah, the first one. What with Marcus spending money at a brothel and yeah. well, you didn't I... spend money at a brothel, mate. He was getting them back into that lady's Christian household. Oh, man, that's wild. <laughs> See, Paulie wouldn't know that either. <laughs> like, no one knows this. Though. It's got kicked wild, out of the man. house because these yeah. people were religious, and he was getting hookers back there. <laughs> <laughs> that's just man, what a messed up world we live in. Um, but the first of anything's always always special to you, right? Yeah, 2016 was pretty good. I mean, 2018 it sucked because I wasn't able to participate. But it was still pretty amazing. And oh, you I still played a big role there, mate. Paulie, for anyone listening to this from the NBL One, it had to be the worst first time for Ben Purser. I'll never forget waiting for an hour and a half for him to finally get back. So we won the championship. Oh, that, yeah, yeah. And P-test. poor Ben got <laughs> drug tested after the grand final. So meanwhile, we're all in the locker room waiting for Ben because he and he sweats like he man, sweats like a fish. Anyone who knows Ben Purser. <laughs> The dude has to change jerseys. He just he's drenched. So he goes to do the urine test. Can't urinate like he can't pee because he had nothing. He was that dehydrated, right? So we're all waiting around like, where's Ben? Yeah, where's Ben? Eventually they let him come in, sing the song, and then he went back out again. And then we're all back at Cooper yeah. Hamilton's house. Yep. Didn't and then he rocks like up. Hours. Yeah. Like what an awful way to like finish off your first ever like his as a captain his first. Did he ever win one before that? No, that was his first. That was his first. Yeah. So his first championship as a captain, as a Perry Lake Hawks like stalwart, like legend, right? He'll go down in history as one of the top five or you know six players at that organization. Hundred percent, right? And that was his reaction. <laughs> like, come on! All right, last one. Hard hitting, and be very careful here, Conrad. <laughs> Jordan or LeBron? Oh man, LeBron's not even in that conversation, in my opinion. Oh man, I love this guy. Can we get him back on? <laughs> I love it. You know what? I've asked three, past three people. Still Jordan. It's amazing. And it has to be. I mean, there, there is no. Com- I think for the common person, there is no comparison. Mm-mm. Don't ask Jared Holmes. Don't ask Jared. Jared Holmes and I <laughs> will, will, will fight over this till the oh, cows come home. He used to stir me up all the time. <laughs> That's the one way to stir me up is like start talking about that. And everyone knows it too. And the worst part is, I still haven't matured enough to not react. Yeah, I know. But, man, <laughs> but I'm a Lakers man through and through, right? So, yeah. you know, watching those two, like watching Magic and Johnson go at it, or Kobe and Jordan, so Magic and uh, I was Jordan. I say Magic and Johnson. Magic and Jordan, <laughs> and then you've got Kobe and Jordan. Like, yeah. you know, I could be forgiven for, for going down one of those two other paths, mm-hmm. but Jordan Jordan is, you know, from a, from a purist numbers guy, yeah, he's done, he's done everything anyone else hasn't done. Yeah, yeah. So, yep. good luck to him, mate. Oh, that's it. Um, so, look, thank you for coming in today. I appreciate it, mate. Um, it's been a long time before I saw you. I mean, we've been chatting on. Oh, man, we've been chatting for a while. while. But, yeah, we'll have to catch up and have have some more drinks and sit down and talk about life, I guess, have away a whiskey with that. a cigar and actually grow up, mate. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> I'll, um, get you, I'll get you a non-nicotine cigar. They probably geez. make those things in some white oh, countries God. these days. No, I, don't, <laughs> I don't do any of that, man. Like, um, but look, any of that. It's just, it's just tobacco. It's not nothing else. I get that, but that's just not me. It's just, I don't know. How can you say you're a fan of Jordan when that dude used to roll in smoking six a day? Yeah, that dude used to have a baseball bat in his locker as well. Like, what did he use that for? He's just sitting there with a baseball bat. Like, weird, man. That's his meditation tool. <laughs> that's it. That's it. His whacking um, stick. <laughs> look, for anyone out there who wants to get some financial advice, life coaching, anything, like, this is the man to go to in Western Australia. Uh, you can find it at www.inspiredmoney.com.au. He's also, which I just recently found out, you're a part of Armstrong Basketball. Yeah, I love doing yeah. that stuff with the so kids. I saw your photo yeah, there, it. looking all suave and stuff. So www.armstrongbasketball.com.au, or you can find him on his own website because he's that big. www.conradfrancis.com. He's also on uh, Instagram, Facebook. You have everything I'm, else. I'm, I'm, you know, LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Yeah, yep. I'm on all that stuff. I mean, I'm bad at it. You guys do a good job on there. I'm, I'm terrible at that stuff, but. 
Yeah, but you yeah, have people you to do follow, it. Eh? You have people to do your uh, inspired money account. I, I do, I do. Yeah. But yeah. Um, but yeah, if you if you can't find him around that way, DM us. I'll connect you with him. Um, but look, thank you so much for sticking around. It's been a longer episode than what we normally do, but <laughs> this man is honestly someone that I've looked up to for a long time now. Um, I appreciate everything you've done for me in the past and hopefully continue to do in the future. And, um, yeah, I cannot thank you enough for coming in. Love you, brother. Likewise. Cheers, brother. That's the stuff. One shot at a time. You're right, Roy. Just knock it on. Let her rip. <laughs> no, I'm not, Grandpa. I'm playing tennis. You're playing golf and you're going...